Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habata fillah It's imperative that we learn the da'wata salafiyya Da'wata ahla sunnati wal jama'ah And that requires opening our hearts to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam and that also requires us to leave off partisanship blind following individuals, personalities, groups, websites so on and so forth and we're going to talk about why because it was sent to me uh, from a so-called Salafi marital website and the discussion that took place on the website as with many statements we've seen issued around the internet about following particular groups and following particular ulama blindly following them and there is this is no exaggeration that there are some individuals who almost go to the extent of worshiping scholars and I've been in tons of gatherings and seen and listened to individuals praise certain scholars and take not mention the book of Allah or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but instead they say Shaykh so and so said this and that's the end of it Shaykh so and so said about him and that's the end of it there's no knowledge base intrigue into what the Sheikh said or into the hukum, the ruling, or anything other than that. Listen to what some individuals who claim to have a Salafi marital website said on their group. They said, we remind the group members that this is a Salafi marriage group. Okay. We promote and try to follow the minhaj of Sheikh Rabir and Salafi publications, half of the whom Allah Ta'ala, inshallah. If you have any enmity, to the above sheikh, students, and or their associates, or approved and recommended persons, then you are requested to leave this group immediately, as in that case you have rendered yourself unwelcome as per Salafi methodology guidelines. We understand that many people are still learning Salafia and are new to the concept of Salafi methodology on, on, and so forth. It would have sufficed them to say, adhere to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the madhab of the salaf. But instead they, in, they made individuals as the criterion, as the mezan, and we're going to talk about why this is one of the pillars of Hizbiyah and why these kind of statements for the new person embracing the da'wah to Ahl sunnah this is immensely deceiving. You are not joining a cult. You are not joining a clique. You are not joining a hizb. And we're going to give you kalam from the Book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the madhab of the Salaf and contemporary Salafi scholars. First and foremost, I'd like to mention a statement of our Shaykh Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah Yarhamu who said, Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, Da'wah to Min Kitabi La Ila Kitabi La, Wa Min Sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ila Sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, The Da'wah of Ahl Sunnah, this is the Salafi Minaj, it is the Da'wah from the Book of Allah to the Book of Allah. You're calling to the Book of Allah, you're not calling to even our Shaykh, we love him, Shaykh Rabi, Hafdallah Ta'ala. But you're not calling to him. He's not the criterion. The criterion is the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said, da'wah to ahl sunnah it is da'wah to it's the call to the book, from the book of Allah to the book of Allah. And from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitabi al-kareem, about who we're supposed to follow. Qala subhana wa Allah and obey Allah and obey the Messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
اتبعوا ما انزل اليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه اولياء قليل ما تذكرون الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد في كتاب الكريم اتبعوا ما انزل اليك اليكم and follow that which was revealed to you that's the book of Allah من ربكم from your lord and do not follow other than him from the from your supporters or from supporters very few reflect so reflect on that habitatullah allah did not order you to follow so and so and so and so we love them in accordance with their adherence to the sunnah and we avoid them in accordance with their distance from the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we don't follow anyone blindly and follow them in their mistakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem وَأَنَّ هَذِ الصَّرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاتَّبِيُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِيُوا سُبُلٍ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَسَاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem and verily this is my straight path then follow it so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to follow his path and al-amr yifidhu wujub whenever Allah gives us a command it means it's an obligation unless there's a sadif, unless there's something else in the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah to show us that it is no longer an obligation, that it's mustahab or one of the other ahkam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us, He prohibited us. So here is the amr wa nahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to follow His path and He prohibited us. And do not follow the various paths. فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ And because therefore they differed and they split uh, from his path. They deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means the hizb, hizbiya, the various groups and sects. ذَلِكُمْ وَسَاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And this is what I order you with in order that you will fear me. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold all of you steadfast to the rope of the law and do not divide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to adhere to his rope. And some of the Mufassireen said the Habli Allah that this is uh, the book of Allah. And some say that the Habli Allah, the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is the, uh, the Jama'ah, the main group of Muslims. And some of them explain that it's the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these or this is ikhtilaf to know what this is uh, uh, differences regarding gradation they do not contradict one another so it is sufficient to say follow the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to the madhab of the salaf not the madhab of so and so or so and so not the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa or the Imam of Imam Ahmed or Imam uh, Shafi'i or Imam Malik, but rather their madhab was the madhab of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam articulated on his tongue in his actions and in his prophetic sunnah. And that's what we're ordered to go back to. Because, Kullu yusib wa yukhti illa sahiba hadhi qabr kama qala Imam Malik. Imam Malik was teaching in the haram and he mentioned this statement. He said that everyone makes a mistake. Okay, maqil. Everyone makes a mistake except the inhabitant of that grade. So everyone sometimes gets something correct and sometimes makes a mistake except the inhabitant of that grave. So we're ordered to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, not to order to follow a particular website or a particular uh, group or sect or individuals, but rather we're ordered to follow the sabil al-mu'mineen, the path of the believers and the hablillah, at tamasik bi hablillah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the people from before us, that when it was mentioned, with aqila lahum, attabiu ma anzal Allahu, qalu bala, or qala bal, natabiu ma alfayna alayhi abaana. That the people from before us, that when it was said to them, follow the path of your Lord. Follow what was revealed by your Lord. They said, no, nay, rather, we will follow 
that which our fathers were upon. So this is them a taklid. This is something, an ayat, which illustrates the sinfulness and the dispraiseworthiness of following individuals blindly. The Prophet وسلم, warned us about taking our groups, uh, dividing the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, and diverting and deviating from his Sunnah by causing, by following personalities and following individuals instead of following the Messenger of Allah. وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, said, If tarakatil Yahuda la ifta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakatil Nasara la ifnatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sataftariku hadhi Ummah la the Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews will break into 70, uh, 71 sects, and the Christians into 72 sects, my women into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? They said, those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions now, uh, this day. Not what Sheikh so and so or group so and so said, but rather what the Messenger of Allah, Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Shafi'i, and we know who Imam Shafi'i was, said, Either Khalifa Qawli, Qawli Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for Adribu bi Qawli Arad al Haid. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, if my statement differs with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then throw my statement against a wall, meaning discard my statement, and take that from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why we're ordered to follow Kitab wa Sunnah, not ordered to follow individuals or ashkhas. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala said, La tuqallidni, la ولا تقلد مالك ولا أوزاعي وخذ من حيث أخذو Imam Ahmed, he said Don't blindly follow me and do not blindly follow Malik meaning Imam Malik ولا أوزاعي meaning Imam أوزاعي وخذ من حيث أخذو and take from where they took Here's Imam Ahmed saying not to follow him blindly and not to follow these other great a'imma but take from where they took, but rather individuals from a lack of knowledge, speaking, making groups, websites, dedicating themselves to this, saying we remind the group members that this is a Salafi marriage group. We promote and try to follow the minhaj of Sheikh Rabi and Salafi publications. What does the minhaj mean? The minhaj means it's a methodology, a way, a path. But here Imam, Mal, uh, Imam Ahmed negated that on himself, negated that on Imam Malik, he negated that on Imam Uzai. But yet you have the nerve to say, follow so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so who's not even anything like the great uh, of the past? This is a very dangerous thing. There's no way we can criticize or someone can claim their Salafi and criticize the Sufis for blind following their sheikhs. For the Sufis and the other groups and Akhwan and Muslimin for making bay'ah and blindly following their leader. Or such and such group, all these various groups and Ahzab that have secret bay'ah and have uh, secret partisanship to their leaders to where they will fight and kill and make al wala wal bara based on individuals. Absolutely dangerous. Absolutely from the, the pillars Arkana Hizbiya. And this is so dangerous. It's not sufficient that you say you're Salafi or you have Salafi Menhaj. Al Ibra bi Haqaiq. Laysa bi Musamiyat. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. Listen to the statement of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah also showing that it's not an obligation and that we should not be calling to individuals and websites and other things like this. That doesn't take away from the good. We love our ulama. We love the du'at khair those people who call to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf and don't call to themselves and don't call to their sect and they're his. We love them. But we love them in accordance with their adherence to the Book and the Sunnah. 
قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى قال فرض على خلق طاعته وطاعة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يجب على هذه الأمة طاعة أحد بعينه في كل ما يأمر به وينهى عنه إلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى كان صديق الأمة وأفضلها بعد نبيها نبيها يقول أطيء أعطيوني ما أعطاك الله فإذا عصيت الله فلا طاعة لي عليكم شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى said he said it's an obligation upon the creation to follow Allah and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and it is not an obligation so when you make a, care, uh, a condition in your groups that you must be on the medhab of so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, this is a very dangerous, uh, very dangerous uh, thing to make something that's not an obligation, a shart, a condition. And Shaykh al-Islam, said, وَلَمْ يُجِبُوا It is not an obligation upon this nation to obey anyone, specifically, بِعَيْنِهِ in everything they command or everything they prohibit except Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if it were Sadiq meaning Abu Bakr al-Sadiq radiyallahu ta'ala an Sadiq al-Ummah the best of it after the, its prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said and obey me as long as I obey Allah and if I disobey Allah then do not obey uh, then there is no obedience to me. This is what Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said. But how is it that people could call people to other individuals and groups so easily? And from some of the contemporary imams of Ahlul Sunnah in this time, Imam Fuzan was asked, Virtuous Shaykh, may Allah grant you success. There is a phenomenon among the young ones and it is the testing of people with individuals so if you agree with the one testing you you are from Ahl Sunnah and if you oppose him then you are an innovator so what is your advice concerning this the Imam said half of Allah Ta'ala the advice is that he who agrees with the book and the Sunnah then he is from Ahl Sunnah without looking at individuals except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so we do not follow anyone except the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there was for you in the messenger of Allah a good example as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and as for other than the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he who follows the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then be like him and he who opposes the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then we oppose that person so the one who is to be followed is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and due to this Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said he who alleges that it is obligatory to follow a person other than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he must be made to repent and if he does not this is because he has affirmed that there is a person other than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is to be followed and we do not test the people with individuals rather we test them with the book and the sunnah and with following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you test someone, test them with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it's the He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is obligatory to follow. Ahabatifillah, that should be suffice us. But let's hear what another great contemporary Imam, Imam bin Uthaymeen, said about these kind of statements and these strange ideologies. And these ideologies, they come from Hizbiyya. He, he referred us back to what the definition, what is Salafiyya? قال سلفي is following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba for they are our salaf, our predecessors who preceded us so following them is salafiyya as for taking salafiyya as a special minhaj such as that everyone who differs with it is considered astray even if he was on the truth taking salafiyya as a partisan path meaning hizbiyya then this is beyond doubt opposite to salafiyya all of the Salaf of the early generations called for unity and harmony around the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and did not regard as misguided those who differed with them 
on the basis of their understanding interpretation of Ta'wil, except when it came to matters of Aqidah or beliefs, because they regarded those who differed with them in these matters as misguided. But with regard to practical issues, they were often easygoing. But some of those who followed the path of Salafia in modern times, or claim to, started to regard as misguided everyone who differed with them. If you don't take from him, if you don't say Sheikh so-and-so is the most knowledgeable, you're not Salafi. If you don't refer your affairs back to student of knowledge so-and-so or die so-and-so in such-and-such ballad, you're not Salafi. If you don't praise them, you're not Salafi. Or better yet, let's look to the quote that was articulated here. If you have enmity to the above Sheikh, students and or their associates or approved or recommended persons, SubhanAllah, it's gone that far. Approved or recommended persons. That means if the sheikh is given so and so in a and in such and such ballad a tezkiyah, then regard they, they have a hands off approach. It's as, as as the Christians who say that I'm blessed and I'm saved. Subhanallah. What a dangerous minhaj, a dangerous methodology that has developed among some of the youth. But some of those who follow the path of Salafiyah regard everyone who uh, differs with them as misguided. This is something that is to be denounced and cannot be approved of. And it should be said to these people, look at the way of the righteous early generations of Salaf al-Salih. What did they used to do? Look at their way and how open-hearted they were in the case of differences in which Ijtihad is justified. They even used to differ among uh, concerning major issues, matters of uh, belief and practical issues. That's what Imam bin Uthaymin said. Uh, Sheikh Bedr al utaybi Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentioned this in his treatise. He said, amongst the Salafis today, there are those who cause the people to flee and test the people in their religion. They harm the Salafi minhaj due to their disgusting statements and strange actions due to their oppression and ignorance. Again, this is a type of oppression because you're oppressing those new Muslims in that group and it's articulated based on ignorance. If you are a student of knowledge, I can't even imagine a true student of knowledge not saying, go back to the Book of Allah, our group is based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not the madhab of so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. I can't, it's hard for me to fathom this. So he said, They harm the Salafi Minahats due to their disgusting statements and strange actions, due to their oppression and ignorance. In fact, due to their detested Hizbiya for individuals and personalities, due to their criticizing people who when the same matter is found in who they love, they do not criticize. Look at the hypocrisy and look at what we've seen amongst many of the youth. The hypocrisy, this is not from Salafiyah. They harm the Salafi Minhaj by propping up people as measures of association and disassociation and whoever they associate, as they mentioned. And love and hatred to the extent that due to a person's closeness to them, they are given a certified pass to Salafia. These people who they have propped up are not those whom the Imams of the religion rely upon. Neither are they themselves from the major well-known Imams. It can almost be said that this is detested Hizbiya in the cloak of Salafiyah. And as we mentioned the Qa'ida in the beginning, Al-Ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musamiyat. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So going back to what was articulated, if you have any enmity to the above sheikh, students, and or their associates, or approve and recommended persons, then you are requested to leave this group immediately, as in that case you have rendered yourself unwelcome as per Salafi methodology guidelines. That's according to the Minhaj of the Salaf, unless that's the name of their group, I don't know. When we look at that statement on the scale, it's a statement that reeks of Hizbi, of calling to yourself, calling to your group, calling to a sheikh, calling to a particular group of personalities, and it's a very dangerous thing, and making al-wala wal-bara, love and hate based upon that, and the books of the Salaf, and the books of the Mu'asireen are filled with statements, and it will suffice us, just the last couple statements, so we can put this goal, this statement that was written on the Mezan, so we can put it on the scale, and just see how it fits up, 
as we know, a statement of the Salaf, يُعْرَفَ الرِّجَالِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يُعْرَفَ الْحَقِّ بِالْرِجَالِ So as one of the Salaf uh, articulated, that we know the man in accordance with the truth, and we do not know the truth in accordance to men. That statement should, should suffice us, because that's a statement of the Salaf. And that's really a qa'ida. That is a qa'ida, a principle of the Salaf, not just a statement of a single one of the Salaf, but this was how the Salaf looked at the, the religion. They didn't make it based on personalities and individuals, and but rather they made ta'zim of the nasus, ta'zim of go, uh, you know, exalting the text, the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the madhab of the salaf, the sabila mu'minin. And with regards to that, a statement of our Shaykh, Shaykh Ubaid Ibn Abdullah Jabri, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, Wala yuraf al haq bir rijal, wal ma'ana. So then he, he gave us the meaning that you don't know the, the truth by the man, bi ma'ana. Annu laysu mujarri suluk al rajal fi qawl o fi'l. هو دلالة على أنه مصيب بل الحكم على أقوال وأعمال عند السلفيين ميزانان فقط النص وإجماع. so he said that this statement it means that it is not sufficient just looking at a man's uh, his conduct and his statements and his actions but the evidence the dala or, or that that's a evidence that he is correct that that is evidence that he is on the truth in everything rather al hukum ala aqwal wa a'mal in the salafin the ruling based uh, on a person's statements and actions with the salafis is based on two scales and he said an nas wa ijma Anas meaning the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and al ijma meaning the ijma of the salaf. And looking back at that statement that was made, let's look now to what Bin Uthaymeen said, one of his statements regarding people who call to individuals and groups and, and say that the truth is with them or that this is our minhaj, is his minhaj. Bin Uthaymeen said, and due to this, we find that some of the students will be with a sheikh from amongst the mashayikh. He is with him whether he is on the truth or falsehood. And he is hostile towards anyone other than him. And he deems misguided and calls an innovator he who does not stand with his sheikh. And he sees that his sheikh is the reforming alam. And that those besides him are either ignorant or those who are corrupt. And this is a big mistake. Rather, it is necessary to take the statement of he whose statement agrees with the book and the sunnah and the statements of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not about individuals. It's not about ashkhas. Because we all, as the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes. But the best of those who make mistakes are the, or, 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 or sin are those who repent. And Imam uh, Ahmed al-Najmi, he said, a person being fanatical for his group and aiding them, even though they are wrong, is not permissible. It is only permissible to stand up for the truth. Although that person may be an outsider and your close relative are on falsehood, you must help the one far from you against the person near to you or dear to you by saying you are wrong. That's why you have to look to the nas, we have to look back to the text, and that's what we call to. That's what Salafi is. It isn't calling to individuals and groups. Sheikh Zaid al-Madkhali, half of the uh, Allah, said, this applies to every innovator and misguided person who claims the call of Islam and doesn't establish it clearly with actions. In fact, his deeds and actions are in opposition to his speech, his call to his da'wah. This is among the issues of jahiliyyah and the methodology of the hypocrites. So it shows us the danger of habitifillah, and hopefully that suffices us to know. And there's countless nasus and countless texts of the ulama 
which bear witness and show the sinfulness of ta'asab, of blindly following and having partisanship to individuals and making al the love, and bara based on individuals, but rather al wal bara is based on the truth. It's based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.